with all that said, uh, I wanted to introduce you guys to uh, an interesting technology uh, that I think really is going to revolutionize uh, government control over, over food. As many of you know, there's been all sorts of controversy surrounding uh, GMO foods, uh, genetically modified organisms, and, and, and the use of pesticides, and whether or not your food is organic. And of course, um, you never actually really know what you're buying. And I think that this uh, innovation, this uh, invention is going to change all that. And what I'm talking about is a technology called, uh, I believe the name of it is uh, Scion, Skyon. I don't, I don't, I never know how you pronounce that word, but um, this is a technology that uses uh, infrared and infrared spectrometer, or perhaps uh, I guess a better way of putting it is a cloud storage attached to an infrared spectrometer with a portable, with a portable device that allows you to scan fruits and vegetables and wine and, 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 and meat and poultry. And this portable device scans data, I think, to an infrared spectroscopy uh, database that they have uh, on their end. And this tells you everything that you need to know about uh, the fruit you're consuming, the meat you're consuming, uh, the poultry you're consuming. And I think it's, it's really amazing. I mean, they launched a Kickstarter. I mean, they launched a Kickstarter on this. And if any of you have taken organic chemistry, you know about infrared spectroscopy and about how uh, every organic compound contains its own functional groups, whether or not there's a nitrogen attached to a carbon and, and uh, primary and secondary and tertiary carbons and bromine groups and leaving groups. If you've taken organic chemistry, you know a lot about this. And you know that you did uh, several uh, lab exercises where you had to take, for example, a grapefruit uh, isolate the limonene. And I remember, I, I actually distinctly remember when I took organic chemistry one, uh, that me and my friend both got our grapefruit when uh, we were doing the experiment where you uh, extract uh, lime, limonene from a grapefruit. Uh, we both got our grapefruit from, uh, you know, some mom and pop store, whereas everybody else went to Walmart uh, or their local supermarket uh, for their grapefruit. And you could clearly see when we extracted our product and we ran it through the infrared spectroscopy machine, which gives you peaks that correlate to these functional groups, you know, uh, where a hydroxide is, you get a, a, a bump, I think, uh, if I remember correctly from my organic chemistry days, you get a bump at uh, 1700 nanometers when you get, uh, when you have a ketone present, which is just uh, uh, an, an oxygen double bonded to a cyclohexane ring or or an alkene or an alkane or whatever. So this technology, infrared spectroscopy, tells you a good deal of information about the substance that you're examining. And in terms of food, uh, this really could revolutionize things because now we're dealing with an added uh, component, an added level of consumer inquiry uh, in terms of the food we ingest. Now we can start making uh, databases with this technology uh, to determine what blueberries, right? What, what supermarkets or, or grocery chain stores sell the blueberries with the highest amount of antioxidants. You can tell when your food is ripening to just the degree that you want it at. You can get a chemical readout of, of the food that you're processing and juxtapose it on top of uh, the IR spectra for a genetically modified uh, tomato, if, if that's what you're buying, right? You can go buy organic tomatoes. You can go buy a tomato made by some agribusiness giant that creates its own tomatoes with its own uh, poison or, or pesticide uh, naturally excreted as the fruit grows, right? And you can compare these two and you can identify the differences between the two. And now you don't have to ask Monsanto, for example, to label its, its GMO foods. You can decipher that for yourself. So this is what I think the future is, right? Inventing technologies that let us sidestep the state to any degree possible. And this technology, this infrared spectroscopy device, this portable uh, IR, IR device has a Kickstarter up and that's in the description box. And you know, if you want to support that, I think it's important to support technologies like that. But this is what, this is what the future is, gentlemen. You're not going to do away with the state by begging politicians to, uh, to do it for you. I think the, the, I think the main flaw, I think the main conceit with uh, libertarians and anarcho capitalists and whatever, is that they believe that the method by which they're going to achieve this stateless society or this minimized government is by asking politicians to minimize government. Well, politicians are part of government and they have a vested interest in staying part of government. And they certainly aren't going to uh, 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 do away with their cushy $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 jobs that are 
way above the average uh, pay for your average everyday blue collar or even white collar worker. They're not going to do away with those cushy gigs funded by the taxpayer. Uh, I think it would be uh, it would be silly to assume that they will. Another uh, interesting article that I found on this topic uh, was an article that talked about Silk Road, which uh, in effect is uh, a deep internet uh, drug trade, black market of illegal uh, drugs and even weapons. Uh, and Silk Road, you know, frankly, I don't know exactly how it works and I don't know how uh, the authorities don't have uh, uh, more control over all of this, but uh, apparently, uh, Silk Road delivers, uh, a, a, in a free market, delivers uh, illicit drugs to people that want to try them. We're talking about LSD, DMT, ecstasy, cocaine, uh, all of these hardcore uh, illegal drugs. And it delivers them uh, via services like UPS and FedEx. Uh, I, guess, I guess the way they do it is that the government doesn't have time, of course, to uh, investigate every package that FedEx or UPS delivers and doesn't even have the legal mandate to do so. Uh, and so uh, they deliver drugs uh, uh, in this way. And so people get uh, DMT and LSD and ecstasy and cocaine and all of this, all of these hard, hardcore illegal drugs uh, through this service, uh, the Silk Road, which uh, recently got shut down, I think, uh, by the federal government. But uh, of course, the beauty of the internet is that once you shut down one channel, a million others can open up. And it's, so, and it's, and it's this kind of uh, internet-based illegal drug trade uh, that's been going on. And there's an article making the argument that the uh, existence of the Silk Road, this, this uh, internet drug trade, actually lowered uh, the crime rate that we attribute to drug violence, right? So uh, for the libertarians, this is definitely something that's encouraging because it proves uh, that less state involvement, of course, uh, which, which is something that I believe in. Uh, I just don't believe that it's true in 100% of the cases. Uh, but I think that less state involvement is better uh, and, that, and that if we were to legalize uh, the drugs that are currently uh, funding the war on drugs uh, here in America and the world over, pretty much anywhere in the West. Um, if we were to make those drugs legal, uh, the violence would go down. And of course, we have uh, instances in history like Prohibition to point to this as well to support this fact. Uh, but it's never been really proven with these uh, uh, high-tech designer drugs like ecstasy or or drugs that take uh, an experienced chemist to synthesize, like the hallucinogenic, specifically DMT. Uh, I think it's very interesting that they're making the insinuation that this illegal uh, internet drug trade actually decreased the crime rate. So check that article out. And, uh, you know, that's all I really got to say for now. Hopefully you enjoyed these topics of discussion. Uh, although this is a channel generally dealing with uh, MGTOW topics, I do like to uh, branch out and I want to do that more often. So if you find these talks interesting, uh, feel free to support this channel uh, in any way you see fit. Uh, if you want to donate, there's a PayPal link as well. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, I appreciate all my subscribers. Stay tuned.